An Artist of the Floating World is a novel written by British author Kazuo Ishiguro in 1986. In 2017, Ishiguro was honored with the Nobel Prize in Literature for his body of work. The tale opens in an unidentified Japanese city in October 1948. The story is told by a retired artist named Masuji Ono. During the war, he lost both his son and his wife. Ono thinks back to when his older daughter Sesko and her son Ichiro, who live in a different town, came to visit him a month ago. The whole family is worried about Ono's younger daughter Noriko's chances of getting married. A year ago, Noriko was in talks to get married to a man named Jiro Miyake, but his family pulled out of the talks for unknown reasons. Noriko is talking about getting married to a man named Taro Saito, but she is almost 26 years old and is thought to be too old to be single. Ono is angry because he thinks his daughters think he knows the real reason why the marriage talks fell through and is trying to keep it from them. The poster for a horror movie that Ichiro saw at the railway station has captivated him. Ono plans to take Ichiro to the movies, but Noriko, Ono's daughter, says she already has plans. Sesko says she'll spend the next day with her father, and Ono and Ichiro can go watch the monster movie later. The following day, Sesko advises her father to take steps to avoid specific details about his history from falling into the hands of the Saito family during their investigation into the Ono family's origins. Ichiro and Ono go to the monster movie the next day. On the way, they meet Taro Saito's father, who informs Ono that they have a common acquaintance, Mr. Kuroda. Ono's story of Sesko's visit is filled with thoughts about the past and the present. He discusses the time he spends at Mrs. Kawakami's bar, the only remaining establishment in an area that was formerly a pleasure district with several bars and restaurants before the war. There, he and his former student Shintaro reminisce about the past with Mrs. Kawakami. Ono also discusses his involvement in establishing the pleasure district. He had written to the authorities as a well-known artist and asked him to put their support behind a bar. The bar, called the Migi Hidari, became a place where Ono and his students would drink and talk about how their art could help build a great new future for Japan. Ono also talks about a time in his own childhood when his father told him that he would shame the family if he became an artist, and then burned Ono's paintings. Ono recalls several encounters with the younger generation. He recalls bumping into Jiro Miyake and hearing from him that he is pleased his company's president committed suicide to atone for the company's actions during the war. He also remembers a conversation he had with Sesko's husband Suichi at the reception after his son Kenji's funeral, and how angry he was about how many people of his generation died in the war and how many leaders were too afraid to take responsibility for their actions. Lastly, Ono talks about his first meeting with an old friend to make sure that nothing from his past will get in the way of Noriko's wedding. He goes to the Arakawa district to see his old friend Matsuda, who has been sick. Matsuda assures him that he would only speak positively about Ono, but if he is worried about the inquiry, he should seek out his old student Kuroda. The second set of memories were written down in April 1949. They are about Noriko's Miai, which is a formal meeting between two families whose children might be getting married. Ono begins by describing his feud with Shintaro, who wants him to write to a possible employer and explain that Shintaro disagrees with Ono about work they performed together during the war. Ono says that it may seem like he was hard on Shintaro, but he explains that Shintaro's visit was just a few days after the Miai. Ono talks about Noriko's bad mood and rudeness in the weeks before the Miai. He also says that Noriko doesn't know everything he's doing to make sure her wedding goes off without a hitch, for example, visiting Kuroda. Enchi, who works for Kuroda and thinks Ono is someone else, lets him into his apartment. 
When Enchi finds out who Ono really is, he tells him to leave, saying that he doesn't think Kuroda would want to see the man who beat and hurt him in prison and called him a traitor. Ono drinks swiftly at the Miai and is made uneasy by the stilted talk. At some point, he stops the conversation to say that he can admit that some of the work he did was wrong and that he may have been a bad influence on the country. He has the impression that Taro's father, an art historian by the name of Dr. Saito, agrees with what he has to say. The discussion loosens up after that, and it's evident that Noriko and Taro enjoy one another. The third set of Ono's memories was recorded in November 1949. It is mostly about another visit Sesko and Ichiro paid to the family a few months after Noriko got married to Taro Saito. During a stroll around Kawabe Park, Sesko expresses worry to Ono over his comparison to a composer who created extremely powerful nationalist songs during the war and just committed suicide to atone for his part in promoting the violence. Ono attempts to tell his daughter that he is not suicidal, but she says other things that disturb him. Sesko says that his work was beautiful, but that it had no effect on anything during the war. Ono brings up the fact that the previous year, she gave the impression that she considered his profession to be a significant obstacle in Noriko's efforts to be married. Sesko claims she cannot recall such a talk. Ono is stunned and explains that he made a statement during the Miai in response to her remark. Sesko claims that Noriko and the Saitos were all perplexed by his announcement. Ono argues that his comment was suitable since Dr. Saito was acquainted with his wartime work and appeared pleased to learn that Ono's stance had changed in the aftermath of the conflict. Sesko claims that Dr. Saito was completely unaware that Ono was an artist. Later that day, Ono takes his grandson Ichiro out for a walk and tells Ichiro that he will let him try some sake at dinner that night. That night, at the home of Noriko and Taro, who just got married, Ono tries to persuade Sesko to let Ichiro try some sake, but Sesko says no. During dinner, the younger people talk about how happy they are with the new leadership style in the companies where they work, which is more American. After Ichiro goes to bed, Ono tells Taro that it's too bad that he and Dr. Saito didn't get to know each other sooner because they both worked in the art world and knew each other's reputations. This is something Taro agrees with, and Ono looks at Sesko to see what she thinks, but she doesn't seem to notice it all. In his account of this conversation with Sesko and how it made him feel, Ono talks about his past in many different ways. He remembers when he moved into his house 16 years ago and Dr. Saito came up to him and told him how happy he was to have an artist of his stature living nearby. He also thinks about his relationship with a fellow artist called The Tortoise, who worked with him at Master Takeda's company in 1913 or 1914 to make Japanese paintings for export to other countries. When Ono is given the chance to live and study at the villa of the famous artist Mori San, he takes the tortoise with him. During the next seven years, Ono paints like Mori San and becomes his best student. But in the early 1920s, Ono meets Matsuda, an art lover who is a nationalist. Matsuda convinces Ono to change the way he makes art. The tortoise is horrified by Ono's lack of loyalty to Mori ways, sans so Mori San tells Ono he must leave the villa. Ono talks about how happy he was that his own career took off in later years while Mori San's didn't. The last group of memories takes place in June 1950. Ono says that he has heard about Matsuda's death and talks about the time he went to see him a month ago. During this visit, he tells Matsuda that both Noriko and Sesko are now pregnant and that his wife Michiko has been dead for five years. Matsuda says they were just two ordinary men who didn't do much, but Ono says he thinks Matsuda is proud of what he's done with his life. Ono compares himself and Matsuda to the tortoise and Shintaro, 
saying that he and Matsuda can be proud to have tried something ambitious that they believed in, while the tortoise and Shintaro have never tried to rise above mediocrity. Ono also talks about how the area that used to be the pleasure district is now full of office buildings. He sits on a bench in front of one of these buildings and watches the young people who work there. He hopes they do well. If you have any suggestions of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.